Every sin that a human being's committed, Jesus Christ has felt that, yet he did not sin those things. He was touched with the feelings of our infirmities. So when I hear Christians say, well, God doesn't understand. Oh, excuse me? He just doesn't understand what I'm going through. Excuse me? He doesn't know how I feel. Uh, excuse me? According to Hebrews 4, 14 and 15, yes, he does. He was touched with the feelings of our infirmities. And yet, he sinned not. Wonderful verse, isn't it? God, so in other words, Christ knows when you have a bad day and how you're feeling, he knows exactly what you're going through. And when you go to him and say, Lord, listen, look what's happening, then he immediately makes intercession for us. Uh, that's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Pastor, that was really important that um, as a young Christian that to, to learn that um, is because, you know, to confess the sins and, and not make excuses or blow them off if it was something small when, when I was just becoming a Christian. And that, the verse 10 and what you're talking about was real 110 and then what you're talking about was real important to me because it hit me that what Jesus did on the cross and what he continues to do for, for me, and it, it, it just hit home when it said that if I don't confess my sins and I you know make excuses for him, then I'm calling him a liar. It doesn't say calling me a liar. It doesn't say you're a liar. It says you're making him a liar. Right. And it cut like a knife oh. right through my heart that I was calling Jesus a liar. Yeah. That oh, for what he did, he you know he died on the cross for my sins and he continues to be my advocate. And yeah. it, it just it changes you. It, really it does. does it. it changes who you are in your heart. Amen. You realize that. Amen. Powerful yep. stuff that you're talking about. Yep. Today. Yep. All right. So. Jesus Christ is our advocate. Notice the thec second thing. Jesus Christ is the propitiation for our sins also in verse number 2. The propitiation for our sins. Hilismos is the Greek word. And um, it means to be a sacrifice, a covering, satisfaction. It also means a payment an appeasement for sin. Christ did all of that for us. It means to turn away anger and to make reconciliation between God and man. We must understand something. When man sinned against God, God was angry. So man needed someone to, a, to be a sacrifice to make an appeasement for that sin. God was angry and somebody had to step in and reconcile God and man. And if Christ hadn't have done that, <laughs> you think the first flood was bad? <laughs> man, God cannot look and sin. He can't do it. He has to judge sin. He has to punish sin. Remember, God is holy. God is just. He's perfect in love. He's perfect in holiness. He's perfect in justice. Therefore, he must execute justice against the sinner. He has to. It's his nature. He must judge and condemn sin. God has to. The, so this is the glorious gospel of the Lord. What wonderful love and provision. Jesus Christ is the ideal perfect man. Therefore he sacrificed his life for mankind. And his sacrifice covered all of the sin of mankind. When Jesus hung on the cross and shed that blood God looked at that and said the sin has been appeased. It's all on my son. Now man can be forgiven. Jesus Christ accepted our guilt, our punishment, our sin upon his body. He died for all men. He died the perfect sacrifice for sin. Amen? 
That's propitiation. Therefore, when Jesus died, God accepted his death as the sacrifice for our sins, as the covering for our sins, as the satisfaction for our sins, as the payment of penalty for our sins, and the appeasement of his wrath against our sins. Whoa. Can you picture in your mind what he's done for us? Ooh. He did all of that for us. You see, as the advocate, when Jesus Christ carries a man's case before God, he pleads his own righteousness and his death, and God accepts his righteousness and death for man. It is this, by this, by the sacrifice, the death of our sins, that we become acceptable to God. It's all because of Christ. But here, I want you to realize something, and the world needs to understand that. See what Christ has done? Those two positions, what he's done for us? But the world has to understand something. And this is the critical fact. A person has to come to Jesus Christ and trust him as Savior to be his advocate before God. If he does not, then the total wrath of God comes upon that person. And that's a serious matter. Jesus Christ paid the penalty of sinners for all sinners in all generations. That's why it says when we get to chapter 4 and verse 10. I love 1 John 4.10. I quote it a lot in my years. It says, Here in his love. Not that we love God. Nope. But that he loved us and gave his son to be the propitiation for our sins. See, God knew that inside of man's heart, he knew that he would not get the full love of mankind. God knew that. And so what God did, he says, hey, listen, not that we love God. And a human being does not love. No human being is born and says, oh, I love God. No. No doesn't happen that way. Man loves his sin more than God. Man loves his lust more than God. That's why he said in that verse, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son. That's love. Amen? Now, I want to give you a little extra nugget here. When you look at this word propitiation, it means to sacrifice, it means to appease, as I said, sin, it means to satisfy, to cover up all of sin, and it's a, but it's also a sacrificial word. Sacrificial? That, that, us, that us send something thinking up here back in the Old Testament. It's a sacrificial word. So in other words, it is true. That God told Israel to offer sacrifices. You study the Old Testament, especially in, in Numbers, and you'll see all in Leviticus, all those different kind of sacrifices that He made the people of Israel do. And each sacrifice carried was a certain sin. So God told Israel to offer those sacrifices, but He did it for a reason. Do you ever understand why? Do you ever ask yourself the question, what's the, re what, what's the purpose of all these sacrifices? Especially if they can go to you and get forgiveness of sin. Why are you making the people of Israel do all of these sacrifices? Anybody have any think about that? Why? Okay, you go. Give up the things that they love. 
Well, that's a good, you know, that's okay. No, 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 that's not a, no, that's okay. That's not a wrong answer. No, no.